I know I'm doing a good job for my baby? You're not alone in feeling a bit insecure with caring for your bundle of joy. Please know that you will make mistakes and stumble from time to time. In no time you will feel at ease. Trust your instincts. Watching your child grow and become more secure in his surroundings and the world around him will tell you how effective you are in raising your child. Nurse, this thing right here, what is that for? That is a device called a bulb syringe. Okay. And what it's used for is, is to get baby secretions out of baby's mouth. But it also can be used in the nostrils for to remove any mucus if needed. Really, we use it more right now for um, secretions in the mouth. Okay. And the way to use it is by squeezing the bulb and then placing it on the side of baby's cheeks only, never down baby's throat. A lot of times babies will spit up, so you know they can't wash out their mouth, so this is what you would use it for. This is really good to have in the car seat also, have one in the car seat or in the baby's crib when you, or near the crib. Because in case baby spits up any formula or, or uh, breast milk, you have something right away to get remove those secretions, okay? okay? And uh, to wash it, you just put it under warm water with some soap, and you just squeeze it like this, let the suck in all the water, shake up the bulb, and then squeeze all the water out and just let it air dry. Do you all have any other questions about things before we go home? Um, yeah, I think we had a few questions. We, we were wondering about the umbilical cord and the clamp and how, how do we care for that once we take the baby home? It's a good question. Regular care, keeping it clean, um, waiting for it to fall off. If there's a little bit of you know discharge there, that's okay. But certainly if you see any redness all around the skin there, that is abnormal and that could potentially be an infection. So I'd like you all to give your old pediatrician a call if you see that. And the cord's actually going to fall off in about two weeks or so. Sometimes they fall off sooner, sometimes they fall off later, so don't get alarmed. Mm -hmm. Even if the cord is falling off with just and it's hanging on by a thread of skin, do not pull it. Just let it fall off on its own. Once it falls off, it may look a little red and swollen, and that's okay. That's normal. You may have mm -hmm. a little blood, but not much. Just cl keep cleaning it. But if it looks like it's a different color, like blue, black, purple, um, and it looks really swollen and it smells bad, then you want to call your doctor right away. Uh, we also had a question about the, the baby feces and so dark and thick and, you know, is that normal and, which, you know, how long will it take to transition into normal baby poop? You know, that's a good question. Um, that initial stool, that dark green stuff, is called meconium. And uh, typically, that meconium will continue to pass you know, up to four or five days. The average is about a couple of days. Usually by the time you go home, you know, uh, with feeding, breast milk, and or formula, it'll start to transition to a more kind of yellowy, kind of cottage cheese type stool. But that meconium may persist for another day or so. And that's okay, that's normal. scared me the first time. Yeah. And then you just want to do it once. Just once. You don't want to keep wiping it and then wiping it again because you no, can introduce bacteria or infection. You know, want okay. infection, so you always just do. Now, do I just want to just wipe once like that? Yes. I don't want to get too. Right, exactly. So do like this, just really once like that. And then if you need to, you can grab another wipey or another area of the, okay. of the wipe and then wipe again. Okay. Too. Okay. Right, okay. It's okay. So what happens is when you go down, then you go up again and you're introducing it to uh, bacteria. If you have a baby boy, also wipe his entire diaper area from front to back with a baby wipe or clean cloth. If he has recently had a circumcision, follow the directions from your pediatrician or health care provider about cleaning the area. Okay. So how do we take care of the circumcision when we get home? 
That's a good question. Um, I looked at his circumcision this morning. It looks good. Everything is healing pretty nicely. But in those first couple of days after the circumcision, there are a couple of things that I'd like us to do. And one of those is taking petroleum jelly, and we'll give you a couple of tubes of that before you go home. And pretty much every diaper change, what we'll have you do is take some of the petroleum jelly, it's kind of like Vaseline, and basically you just kind of smother it all over, you know, the top of his penis there where the circumcision has been done. What that'll do is help protect the skin, allow it to continue to heal without being irritated with the diaper. Um, do that for a couple, two or three days, and it should look good thereafter. A couple of things I'd like you to look for is if there's any, we shouldn't have any more bleeding. Okay? So if there's any bleeding, or certainly if anything looks red, or if you see any you know, kind of discharge from there, you know, those are abnormal things. Uh, and I'd like you to either give us a call here or call your pediatrician for a follow-up checkup. If your son was not circumcised, then do not forcibly retract the foreskin. Only the outside of the foreskin needs to be cleaned during the first year. It should be cleaned and bathed with soap and water, just like the rest of the diaper area. You may be instructed to give your baby a sponge bath until the cord falls off and the area is healed and if you had a son that was circumcised. Because you want to get your baby clean, dry, and warm as quickly as possible, have all of your supplies and everything ready before you begin the sponge bath. Always test the water, making sure it is not too hot. Remember to always keep a hand on your baby. Never turn your back, even for a moment. Start with the eyes. With a clean corner of a washcloth, wash the inner aspect of the eye to the outer aspect using warm water. Repeat with the other eye, this time using a different corner of the washcloth. Wash your baby's face with clean water. Next, wash around the nose and ears. Never insert a cotton swab up your baby's nose or into the ear. Wash his neck. Then work your way down the front of his body. Make sure to clean between all of the folds of the skin. Be sure to dry your baby thoroughly after each area you wash. Wash your baby's legs. Take the diaper off and clean the baby's genitals. If you have a little girl, make sure you wipe and clean from front to back so not to introduce infection into the baby's bladder. Turn your baby over. Place him on his belly and wash the back and buttocks. Wrap your baby back up as soon as you can. To wash his hair, swaddle your baby and place him in the football hold. Wash the scalp, making sure to stimulate. Rinse thoroughly and dry. Then dress him in a clean diaper and clothes. Like Crying plays an important role. It is your baby's way of talking or communicating with you, as well as a way to release stress and tension. It is how babies express their needs and desires. With that said, knowing all that doesn't make listening to your baby's crying any easier. Let's face it, it can be very stressful and there may be some days that the crying will be difficult for you to handle. Research has shown that a newborn may spend anywhere from one to five hours throughout the day crying. Understanding some of these causes may allow you to better handle your baby's fussy times. Here are some reasons why a newborn will cry. One of the things that they like to do is to be swaddled, okay? And swaddling gives that uh, feeling of them being in, still in mama's belly. And you're going to place uh, the blankets in a safe area with the, with the triangle flap right there. One of the corners flapped in. Line it with the baby's shoulder. Bring the baby's arm down. Tuck this side of the blanket right under the baby's back. Make sure it's pretty snug over, okay? Then you're going to grab the bottom of this flap, bring it over the baby's shoulder. Make sure you have a good grasp on the arm because they're going to want to get out of the swaddle and okay, fight you. Then grab this side of the blanket, bring it over the baby's chest, put your hand right here, 
Grab the bottom of the flap and bring it right over the baby's chest. Then you can just bring this back of the blanket over. You can either tuck it in the back or just leave it at step. And then you just grab your baby, go ahead and pat him. They like to be swayed back and forth. Can you see how quick he's calmed down? Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Newborn screening is a medical procedure which screens babies for serious disorders. The procedure should be performed when your baby is 24 to 48 hours old and requires a few drops of blood from the baby's heel. The sample is placed on a special filter paper. It is allowed to dry and then sent to a laboratory where many different screening tests are performed. These tests identify serious or life-threatening conditions, such as PKU, before symptoms begin. Although they are rare disorders, they can affect a baby's normal physical and mental development. Early diagnosis and proper treatment can make the difference between lifelong impairment and healthy development. It is estimated that one to three of every 1,000 babies born will have serious hearing loss. Hearing screening for newborns before they leave the hospital or maternity center is becoming a common practice. It is recommended that all newborns be screened for hearing. If hearing loss is not caught early on, then there will be a lack of stimulation of the brain's hearing center. This can delay speech and other development in your newborn. Hearing loss is the most common congenital disorder in newborns, 20 times more prevalent than PKU. Talk with your health care provider about the important screening tool. In newborn babies, a degree of jaundice is normal. I noticed that his skin looks just a little bit yellow. That's very, very common. Most of our babies turn a little bit yellow jaundice, uh, and it, that's because the bilirubin goes high. That's why we want babies to take too much of that colostrum, because colostrum has a laxative effect, and it's going to clean the baby's system. But before you go home, the doctor is going to order a bilirubin test, and that's what is going to indicate if the baby needs further treatment. In newborn babies, a degree of jaundice is normal. When red blood cells break down, bilirubin is formed. The baby's liver is too immature to properly get rid of the bilirubin and prepare it for excretion. Normal physiologic jaundice of the newborn typically appears between the second and fifth days of life and clears with time. For high levels of bilirubin, phototherapy may be used. Since bilirubin absorbs light, Jaundice and increased bilirubin levels usually decrease when the baby is exposed to special blue spectrum lights. Phototherapy may take several hours to begin working and it is used throughout the day and night. The baby's position is changed to allow all of the skin to be exposed to the light. The baby's eyes must be protected and the temperature monitored during phototherapy. Blood levels of bilirubin are checked to monitor if the phototherapy is working. If you notice your baby's skin or eyes looking yellow, you should contact your child's health care provider right away. Regular medical checkups during the first two years of life can help keep your baby happy and healthy. Your baby will be scheduled for regular well baby exams in order to monitor his growth and development and allow you to talk about routine care with your baby's health care professional. These visits are most frequently scheduled with routine immunizations for many of the preventable childhood illnesses. How often is he supposed to have his shots? Well, He's due for some when he's six months old. Immunizations are so important. If there's one thing you can do to protect your child, it's immunizations. Um, his are up to date up until this point, and he'll be getting his um, next ones at six months, his DPT, um, which is diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis. He'll also get a polio vaccine then, 
his homophilus influenza, his uh, Prevnar, which is a pneumococcal vaccine, uh -huh. and hepatitis B, as well as rotavirus. Um, that sounds like a lot, but we're fortunate these days that we have combination vaccines. Some of those vaccines can cause some side effects, such as fever or fussiness, but those are usually controlled by things like acetaminophen. Mm -hmm. Even experienced parents may feel worried as they adjust to a new baby's habits, needs, and personality. It is important to remember that most of the common physical problems that occur during a given 24 hours with a baby are usually normal situations or problems with simple answers. But if any of the following symptoms of illness occur, a call to your baby's healthcare professional is in order. Blue lip color is a 911 call. Blue or pale colored skin. Yellow skin or eyes. Patches of white found in baby's mouth. Eating poorly or refusing to eat. No stool for 48 hours and less than six wet diapers a day. Redness, drainage, or foul odor coming from the umbilical cord does not urinate within six to eight hours of circumcision. A temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit or more. Difficulty breathing. Repeated vomiting or several refused feedings in a row. Listlessness. Crying excessively with no known cause. An unusual or severe rash other than prickly heat frequent or successive bowel movements with excess fluid, mucus, or foul odor, experiences drastic behavior changes such as increased irritability, excessive crying without a cause, extreme sleepiness, or floppy arms and legs, congested cough, running eyes, or running nose.